Hi viewers, welcome to Blood Test. Today we are going to talk about the most important good laboratory practice and how to prevent hemolysis. Hemolysis is one of the major criteria for sample rejection. Of course, if your sample is hemolyzed, you cannot run any sample. If you are going to run those samples, you are going to get erratic value, wrong high and wrong low values of your samples. This is a common problem and this is the most easily preventable uh, thing in your laboratory. So this is a hemolyzed sample and this is a normal sample. If you see in a hemolyzed sample, this is a serum sample. This serum is red in color and if you see this is a normal sample or a normal serum which is not hemolyzed. So this is the basic difference. If your serum or plasma is red color tinged or there is redness present, it means that it is hemolyzed and you are not supposed to run samples. These samples, you are supposed to reject them. These are the samples in which you can run your test. So, what happens here is, there is due to some factors there due to some mistakes while phlebotomy or while processing your sample these are the only two ways where you get hemolysis one is during phlebotomy or collection of the sample or during the processing of sample sometimes what happens is due to some negligible mistakes the rbc's break down and release hemoglobin while the hemoglobin is released that is the cause of this red color in this sample now we are going to see what are the most common factors for hemolysis of a sample and how to prevent it. The first one during phlebotomy, when you are going to apply the tourniquet to your patient very tightly, this will cause hemolysis of patient. Second thing, while withdrawing the blood, if you are going to pull the plunger of the syringe too fast or too slowly, this will also cause hemolysis. Once you have withdrawn the blood, when if you are going to vigorously shake it to you know uh, get adhered with the EDTA, then uh, this is again going to cause hemolysis. Instead, what you can do is you can put it in a roller mixer for the adequate mixing of the EDTA with the sample. The fourth important thing which causes hemolysis is improper time you give for the clot formation if you take a sample of you know serum sample what you have to do is you have to leave it for at least minimum 15 to 20 minutes for the proper clot formation if there is no proper clot formation this will cause if you're going to put it directly into the centrifuge the you know the fast revolutions will cause breakdown of these rbc's and invariably there's going to be hemolysis so how to prevent all these the first thing how to prevent this is once you have tied the tourniquet to your patient make sure within a minute or two you take the blood from the patient second thing do not take blood from any IV cannula if the patient has IV cannula for some other reasons do not take blood from them though it is a directly it is there in the vein third thing once you have taken the blood put it in a roller mixer and do not shake it vigorously fourth thing allow it to settle down that is the 15 to 20 minutes you have to give for the serum to settle down before you put it in a centrifuge for the revolutions and fifth most important thing what you have to do is that you have to properly practice phlebotomy phlebotomy is an art you have to properly practice it if you're going to pull the trigger vigorously very fast or very slowly because you're not confident about your phlebotomy very slowly you're going to pull the trigger or the you know the plunger of the syringe this is also going to cause uh, hemolysis so, so to prevent this important factor you have to you know practice phlebotomy that in a moderate speed you are able to withdraw the blood or else you can also use a vacutainer. So these are the causes and these are the prevention how you can prevent the hemolysis of your sample. Now the most important thing if you have a hemolyzed sample and you're going to process this you can get high values of potassium, TSH and because there is excessive breakdown of these RBCs you can also get, get false low values of ferritin and iron. These are the common tests which gets affected by hemolysis of blood. Not only these chemistry parameters the entire chemistry 
chemistry parameters can give you erratic report if you are going to run a hemolytic samples. Good, these automated machines in this era do not accept a hemolysis sample. So make sure you also prevent this hemolysis and the sample is not rejected and you need to again withdraw blood from the patient. If you have any doubts about these or if you want to establish your own center or if you want to upgrade your center to the next level, we are there to help you out from our blood test consultancy. You can contact us at pathlabstartup at gmail.com or you can also whatsapp us at the below mentioned number. Kindly subscribe my channel and this is Dr. Lalita Sindhal signing off your pathology expert.